Then when a dummy, he says that we must then believe that the Quran say clearly that the Quran, the Bible is corrupted, we love. Then there's a different verse that most of they were mentioned to you. It says, Let's read and love together. The verse is not about corruption. It's about they put their finger in the top of a, of a word. Which means they change. But it's stupid, by the way. Because if I put my finger over a, let, a line in the book, I did not change the book. And this is how you know that the, the Quran made by a stupid idiot. He doesn't even speak with Arabic. In chapter 4, verse number 46, it says, Those Jews who displace words from their right places. You go and read the story, you will see the guy, the Jewish guy, he put his finger over it. That's it. And this is in the authentic hadith of Muhammad. The guy, he put his finger over the verse that says, stoned him to death. So how the book is corrupted? And how the words are displaced? Because if I put my fingers over something, I'm not displacing words. Then if we check, if this is the scale for corruption, that means the whole Quran is corrupt. Because it says here, those who display the words from their places, well, the whole Quran is displaced. You ask the Muslims, what is the first chapter that Muhammad, and Muhammad he received? They say to you, the one who Allah squeezed him with, read. Okay, where we can find this chapter? They say to you, 96. How become, how number one become 96? This is displacing the words from their locations. If you ask the Muslims, where in the Quran it says, Today I completed Islam for you, perfected Islam for you. They say to you, this is in the beginning of the Quran, chapter 5, verse number 3. But that means we have more than a hundred chapters after this. But this verse here, chapter 5, verse number 3, it says, Today, this day, I chosen Islam for you. I perfected this religion for you. This day, I com even he used the word completed. So Islam is complete. But that does not make any sense. For this verse to be accurate, it should be the end, like when in the old days in the movie, because people, they used to be slow. And they hope that the movie continue. So in the cinema, they used to put the end. So people, hey, okay, bye bye, we're done. Otherwise, people will wait. And the, there's other reason for sure, not because it's slow, because it, like in the old days, like they have to change the tape, so they take a break, like ten minutes, etc. So now there's no more change of tape. That's it, the end. So if this is the end of the movie, shouldn't be at the end of the movie. Because it says, today I completed. Today. This day. So this verse, in order to be accurate, it has to be the last verse in the Quran. Let us see if we can take more calls. There's people they want to call. Any woman, she send me a, a message, she want to talk to me in private, I will block you. Here we go, let me block you. Can you have a private conversation with me? Go on, convert to Islam, you fit there. Uh... All right. Let us see this person here. Good morning, CP. This is Christian speaking. How are you going? I'm fine, my friend. What would you like to share with us? 
Yes. Um. Hello. Yes, I hear you. Go ahead. Yeah. Um. I would like to add <coughs> your elaboration about the. Jesus says, as the Son, He doesn't know the hour, but only the Father. Mm. Um, it has been discussed. I heard that it has been discussed, and you have already explained to them, but they still can't catch it. First, you have we have to find out why Jesus says that um, his disciples wanted to know when the hour is, and Jesus did not allow them to let them know because in his capacity as a man not as god in his capacity as a man yes that's true he doesn't know the hour in his capacity for example when it it happens today is our uh, what do you call this good friday <clears throat> before he was crucified jesus prayed to the father even when he was praying, his blood was like, oh, sorry, his sweat was like blood. His, his, his what? He was, his, his sweat when he was praying. Mm -hmm. And then his uh, sweat, he was sweating like, mm -hmm. like blood mm -hmm. for uh, dropping to the ground. And then this is as a, in his capacity as a man, because he knows what was what would happen to him and uh, that's why he prayed even in this way he knows what would happen to him that's why he really really wanted his father to take this cup because as an, in his capacity as a man yes he was very very afraid even he felt in a, uh, what is what uh, like in a in Agony, in agony, or something. Yes. Um, no, but where, where, this, where it says he was afraid, how you come to this? Afraid? Not he was not he was afraid, but he felt. Um, don't no, you remember no, no, that? No, my friend. You see, yes. you see, yes. uh, this is actually to refute the Muslims when they say that your God commits suicide. Jesus, he spoke to the Father. He prayed to the Father, and then yes, he knew what the Father want, and he says, "Let your will, yes. let your will be done." Yes. So Jesus, he don't want the cross, you know. Exactly. But yeah. but not because As, he's afraid, but he because he knew this is not really fit for him. But if it's, yeah. if if this this is what it's going to take, I will do whatever it's going to take. This is not about I afraid. Might use the wrong, he, yeah, I might, you, it, yeah, you are using because remember, you remember, wrong, people yes. they are listening, yeah. and people will use yeah. what you said against what you said. You know, Jesus yeah. never okay. been afraid. You know, <laughs> because if Jesus no. is afraid, he will run. He knew. That's right. He knew when yeah. they will come. He knew who was going to deny him. He knew what hour they will be there. So I imagine, I know, I'm wanted by the police. And I know, like 5 p.m., they will come here. Well, I will leave. You know? That's it. Yes. You know, at that time, there's no yeah. ID, there's no fingerprint. And I go. I look like everybody. So Jesus never was afraid. But Jesus, he don't want to be humiliated. But yet... If this is what is going to happen, this is what's going to take to save the world, I will take it. I will let it happen. And that's why Jesus said, nobody can take my life from me, but I lay down myself. Correct? Yes. So the cross, the, the cross yeah. never was a problem, and nobody can take the life of Jesus from him unless Jesus is accepting that. So when you say the human being capacity, that's not true. Because here we go, Jesus is in the human being capacity. And he is saying, I lay down myself and nobody can take it from me. Right? When Jesus talks, he talks in two capacities, in his capacity as a man and in his capacity yeah, but as saying, God. Okay, can, can, you kill, can you kill a man or you cannot? Yes, we can okay. kill a man. So when Jesus yes. said, no, I, nobody can take my, 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 my soul, I lay down myself. Was Jesus speaking as a man or as God? As God. As God. So Jesus is still yes. the same. The same is the same. God and the, and the and the man is the same. Jesus the God yeah, is what, the same. Is the yeah. same as Jesus the man. So exactly. There's no need for all of this, my friend. There, you know, this is will 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 make it like we're trying to make it like what the Muslim they do. 
Let us go around the thing. Jesus, he made it so clear. It is not for the Son, because simply, first of all, it's not for anyone to know about Judgment Day, for it's going to be a surprise. And that will not yeah, happen, because, and nobody yes. will know about it. It's not for Jesus, the Son, to tell anyone about it. And when Jesus, he go to the heaven, then Jesus in the heaven, he and the Father, they are there, and they knew what they will do next, when it's going to be done. The Father, he will send the Son. So imagine the Father will send the Son, but the Son, he do not know what is the mission. He knew the mission. He knew what he would exactly. do. Exactly. He does. It doesn't mean that he doesn't know the hour. Yeah. But because to prevent, this is the prevention that to people will. Yeah. yeah to, from to knowing, from knowing the from, day. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Just Beca because like nowadays. The, because the Lord will try. come. Yeah. The Lord will come like a thief in the middle of the night. That's right. Because if, That's if, why if people they knew, that. if all of us we knew that tomorrow is the day of judgment, all of us will repent. All of us will become saints. Yes, that's right. That's why I say in his capacity as a man, because he 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 talked to people, to men, mankind. That's why yeah, it but is you not see, the, the word you are using. Muslim, they can use it in the wrong way. I understand what you are trying to say, but I believe it's the wrong way to explain it to the Muslims, because this is not in his capacity as a man. This is as is a duty as a man in earth. As his duty as a man in the earth is to what tell. What I mean, man in here let, is let the me, let, son. Let us focus. Isn't it Jesus? He said, "Everything I have is from my Father." Exactly. Okay. As, a, as so God. So this is what the Father told Jesus, and Jesus he tell what the Father told him. As simple as that. Jesus, the Son, he have knowledge we have no. We don't have. We don't have it. And Jesus, one, the one Son, more, yes, he is sharing with us what the Father he wanted the Son to tell. Not everything. Yeah. What he yeah. wanted him to tell. What, one more, one more example as a man that example, maybe you remember a mother, maybe the, one of the disciples' mother came to Jesus saying, Jesus, if the hour comes, please let my son sit one in your, on your right and one on your left. And do you still remember what Jesus answered? He said, it is not my right so that there is no conspiracy. That's why Jesus says that, so that there's, as a, in, in his capacity as a man, so that there's no co conspiracy because they are his disciples. So it 100% they go to, what is it? They go to, 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 to heaven, even though they failed. Just like Judas, for instance. He loved Judas, but he failed. And he, he, he trade, he, he, what, he, 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 what is it? He sold, he sold him. So that is what I meant as his capacity as a man. Jesus said, it is not my right to let you sit down on my life, on my, on my left and on my right in his capacity as a man. It is his right. He be, that's why it is, um, uh, he is, he's going to become the just uh, judge in, in the future. It, on the judgment day, because he is the one who who, who yeah, judges but you see, all I, of I advise you yeah. not to use those words, capacity. I believe it's wrong too, because you keep repeating it, because simply when Jesus, he says, because he is the one who will be sitting in the right of the father. So the woman, she is asking for the wrong request or the person who is asking, exactly. is asking. Yes, because it's not because, so it's, it's not because his capacity, he never used that word. And uh, in the same time, uh, 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 Jesus, as an example, when he was on the cross, he promised a man to be with him in heaven, correct? Yes, that's okay. correct. As but, so, God. But, this is, yes. but Jesus the man, the God in the same time. So Jesus the man yeah. is the same as Jesus the God. But God, yeah. God who come to us in the flesh, he humbled himself. So this is the humble image of God who humbled himself. But that did not make Jesus a change from being God, still he can do what nobody can do. He can forgive sin, yeah. he can, yeah. he, he promised heaven, and he take you to heaven. When he was resurrected, thousands of saints resurrected with him. So that is what all Muslims people have tried to corner us because as, oh, what is it, uh, uh, Muslim people or non-Christian people just look at Jesus as a man. They, they yeah, but, pretend but, but you not see, to understand. But I don't blame yes. them then, because some Christians, when they try to explain who is Jesus, 
they use mm. certain words which they, they should not use. So either we believe that Jesus is God and a man mm. at the same time, or we believe that Jesus is a man when we want and Jesus is God when we want. This would be hypocrisy. No, Jesus is yes. always God. Jesus, the God, yes. the man, still he is the same. And Jesus, or the Muslim, because of their hypocrisy, they forgot that Jesus, who is the man, he can create from the mother birth, as the Quran said. Yeah, he is the man, yeah. but he can tell you what you hide in your house, which nobody can do. He is the man, but he can heal the blind. He is the man, but he can make the leper say, see, uh, or, 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 or sorry, uh, 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 healed. And then they say to you, this is all miracle from Allah. But there is no proof that Allah can do with the same as Jesus. Can yeah. Allah, who is not a man, do what the man Jesus can do? If those things is given from Allah, then Allah should be able to do better. All what we have is a statement from such a person, his name is Allah, saying, I created, but there's no proof. I made, but there's no. And then when we check what he made, we find that this is scientifically wrong. As he explained, how the baby is made is wrong. How the earth is created is wrong. How, uh, yeah. how where is the hail is coming from is wrong. So you, there's no way the originator of the earth and the heaven do not know how he made things. So Islam is a, is a fraud. In the in the in the same same time about the Messiah, the story is very simple. We believe in the Trinity. For the Father is for what the Father. For the Son is what for the Son. For the Holy Spirit is what for the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit conf like join us and be with between us, why it's a, why it's a spirit? Because simply, it's not supposed to be seen. Why the Son? Because he's supposed to be seen. So here we find that there's God who have mm. he took a nature or he have a nature of a man. Why? Yeah. Because you're supposed to see him. This is his. Oh job. yes, this that is, is the correct one. Not capacity, but nature. Nature as a man. That is what I yeah, meant. Even the nature is not. You know, I, I try to avoid word because you know simply English is not our first language. I think there's better words to use. Yeah, but, but but listen, listen. Yeah, because but but listen. We you know, to... God, God, He present Himself in yeah. as He as He wish. We don't tell what God. Yeah. We don't tell how God you should be. But the Muslim they do because they are hypocrite. They decide to design God like God cannot have a son. Well, who said so? Are you telling God if he can have son or not? Hypoc hypocrisy. What I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say is, um, I avoid using um, to evangelize them, to introduce them the correct Jesus. I avoid using the hard words to understand, just like what the disciples say that I teach you just like a baby, and then when you need. Um, uh, food, not hard one, but the porridge, for instance. So that is what I'm using. That's why I use the word nature or capacity so that they can understand, even though it is not the correct word for us, no because problem. we understand. Uh, yeah, we understand as as Christian. We know <laughs> because it is it is the, it it is hamper, hampering them to understand the the Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's why it is hard for them to understand. So that's why I say, in his capacity, they always mock Jesus. A uh, blasphemy-like example, why your God um, eats or, or sleeps. And then I said, yes, in his capacity, because he is he is a man. He, uh, besides God, he is also a man. When he is tired, he needs a break. When he is sleepy, he needs some sleep. And when he is hungry, he, he eats. That is the nature of but a man. But at the same time, so Jesus, can, he can stay yeah. without food for 40 days. Exactly, but that's so they don't when, know when, it. But when Jesus I, I was want, explaining yeah, when, when yeah. Jesus he wants, he can exceed the nature of the nature of the man. He can be that yeah. nature. The, the nature of the man, uh, he gets sick. Jesus never gets sick. The nature of the man that when you are in sleep, you have you are unaware of what's happening. But when when the storm came and Jesus is supposed to sleep, still he is aware of everything and he control the storm. Jesus, yes, perfect. The, Jesus the man, yes. Jesus the man, yet he is walking down the street and he even knew what people think that is impossible mm. for the mm. man. So we need to remember always that Jesus the man is still Jesus the God, or he do God. what God do. Yeah. If we you know, like 
the, the Bible have many places where it show us yeah. exactly, you know, how to understand really the Messiah. Uh, usually, we try to understand just by based on miracles, but the miracles actually is just to explain to us the ability of the person, not who is the person only, because uh, even the, the Messiah, he said that there's false Messiah will come after me and he will do wonder, right? So mm -hmm. doing the wonder does not change the fact if Jesus is God or not. Doing the wonder yes. can be done by Satan, right? But doing the yes. wonder of the Son of God is different from the wonder of Satan. That's why Jesus, he yes. said, from their fruits, you shall know them. Yes. From their fruits. And, yeah. And in my, um, not in my, but um, every single miracle that Jesus has done represents him as God. Yeah. That is what I, I, I conclude. But that is what Muslim people or non-Christian people cannot see because they do not know our faith. They do not. It is they, they have been given the wrong spirit since they were baby. So that's why they can't understand our faith. Just like what you said, uh, according to the Quran, the, the Trinity is wrong taken by Muhammad or their God, that Allah, Mary and Jesus, that is the Trinity in God. Uh, I'm sorry, in, in Christianity, that is wrong. That is because they don't understand it. Because they have been given, since they were born, they have been given the wrong spirit, the, the, the Antichrist spirit. So that's why it is hard for them to understand. But I agree all of what you said, um, Christian Prince. I really, really agree. And I have been uh, well educated by your, um, what do you call this, uh, uh, videos. I follow every single of your video from Australia. I really, really understand. And I have been fully now educated in Muslim religion. And I use these to evangelize my people. I, I will not mention where I come from, but I am, I'm not from Australia, but I live in Australia. And thank you, thank you so much, Christian Prince. You're welcome. And, um, I really appreciate that and please, please keep working on this great job. Thank you, my friend. God Thank bless you. you so and Thank much. you for calling. Take care. God, you, God bless you too. Bye yeah. for now. Bye. You know, if we go to Matthew, if we go to Matthew, just to show you, so uh, that will help the Christians and the Muslims. But you know, the Muslims, they are not really asking to learn. They are asking to ask and they will repeat the question. It doesn't matter what you explain. If you read in you know in in Matthew uh, uh, eleven, you will see Jesus repeating over and over, "All things are delivered into me, of my Father." So, if a Muslim want to say, "Well, how Jesus do not know the day of judgment?" Well, Jesus himself he just told you, "All things is delivered to me from the Father." So. If the judgment day is an order to be done, it's going to be the father too. So why they play dumb and why they play stupid? When we Christians believe that the Messiah is born of the father, what does that mean? All the knowledge is from the father. everything so they play dumb when they want they play smart when they want and no man knows the son but the father which mean all of you do not know me yet wait until you come i come back and then you will see who i am really no one know no one even his disciples who they are next to him This is when one of his disciples, he says, why you don't show us the Father and that's it? The guy, he, you know, he can't take it no more. Okay, Father, Father, show us the Father. He said to him, 
but well, I am with you all this time, and you do not know me? But is that Jesus claiming to be the Father? No. He is saying to him that knowing me is knowing the Father, for I and the Father is one. And all the knowledge is revealed to the Son, is up to the Son to reveal to whoever he chose. The word of Jesus is not a phrase we take and we ignore the rest. But what the Muslim they want, they want you to take one phrase and ignore the rest. And if we do the same to them in their religion, they will say, oh, you are misquoting. Then we show them the interpretation. They say we don't accept interpretation. But if we show them interpretation for the verses here, they say we don't accept it. So they don't accept interpretation in the Quran because this is against what they're trying to play, you know, play to play to us, deception. And then when we try to explain to them what we believe, this is our belief. You want to tell, you want to teach me my belief? Are you debating me about my belief or yours? And do you Muslim think really that the Christian do not know what Jesus says about the day of judgment? Do you think now, after all, you know, it is us who preserve it. It's us who printed. It's us who made it published to the world. And you think that we do not know what it says there? Do you think that the disciples of Jesus do not know what Jesus said? And how come the disciples of Jesus did not get it? They are slow and you are smart? Oh, Jesus do not know that they. Dishonesty is the case. And then when we ask the Muslims, let us go with you. If you are saying that the one who do not know that they is not God, well, your prophet, he received information about the day, and obviously he is not God. Your God, he claimed that the moon is split, and the sign is so near. You can see, if a man in the street saying that, I would say he's a man. If a priest in a church, he said that, well, he's a priest. He is warning people about, you know, but this guy, he gave a timing. The foolish Muhammad, he was trying to copy Jesus. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Jesus, he said, this generation, which means the last one who witnessed all those things, this generation before it pass, the day will come. Muhammad, he tried to copy Jesus. But Jesus, when he mentioned that, about that generation, he's talking about the last generation who witnessed all the signs come before. The sun stopped giving light. The moon light disappear. The stars collapse. The whole universe is in collapse. When those things happen, this and this and this and this, this generation is going to witness the day of judgment. So Muhammad, he decide to copy what Jesus said. And that make him look like a fool. He saw a young boy and he told them, this boy will not live long before he, you know, get older, the judgment day will come. Okay, who is the one who said that to Muhammad? Allah. Muslims, who is the one who said that to Muhammad? Any Muslim can help me? Who is the one who said that to Muhammad? This is statement here. Is Muhammad is making it from his own? Or Muhammad is reading or he is telling us what Allah told him? If you say Muhammad, he is making his own, well, that's mean he's a false prophet anyway. If you say that this is from Allah, that means Allah is a false god anyway.
And then the Muslim, to fix the stupidity, they start adding things. They say, oh, he is saying that those guys in the front of him, they will die. Oh, hold on, they are asking you about the hour. The hour, the judgment day. Even the chapter in the top, it says the interpolation of the last hour. I mean, look how they try to fix it. But what the stupid Muhammad was doing? He was copying Mark 13. But because he's a fool, he got himself busted. In Mark 13, Jesus said, after counting all the signs of the day and the hour, as you see all those signs, He said, this generation this generation, which is the generation will witness all those the last thing will happen. What is the things will happen? The sun will collapse, will light will go, the moon, uh, stars will fall down apart, etc. When all those things happen, that generation who witnessed those things, which mean all the signs completed, so to say, the sunlight will go after a billion year, trillion year. This is not my generation, but their generation will come after that time, will witness that. When all the signs are completed, that generation or this generation who witnessed those things, then the judgment day will be. And this is telling you that Jesus, he have great knowledge of the day of judgment. So what he is saying there is not for you, it's not for the man, the son of man, which means him is in the flesh, to tell you now, to inform, to share, even to know. That day, the date when it's going to be, or this should be hidden from everybody, but it's not going to be hidden from Jesus. And it's not. For he gave us already great details about how that day will come. And here we know to remember that in Christianity we don't have a preset date for heaven, uh, for, for, uh, for judgment day. Why? Because if you remember, uh, you know, when, uh, when the, uh, uh, the, the Bible, the Old Testament speak about God destroying cities, what if there are 70 believers, you, you destroy the city? No. What about there's 15, 20? Destroy the city? No. What about if there's 10? No. So God destroy, because judgment day is destruction. Everything will be destroyed. Destruction will come upon us based in our behavior. It's not a preset date. The knowledge of God has nothing to do with the decision of the day of judgment. It is us who bring us, bring the judgment day on us, fast or slow. When the corruption reaches a point of no return, when there's no righteous people, when everybody is corrupt, then that day will happen. So as long as there is righteous people, the judgment day is not there yet. Which mean, it is us who is in charge of the day of judgment. Now somebody will say to me, oh, you are God then, huh? No, it is our sin, how, how fast we corrupt this earth, because we believe in free will, remember? And because we believe in free will, free will will happen. It is us who bring destruction or not. <clears throat> uh, Abu Bakr <coughs> is sending me a message. Let's call him, I don't know.
Uh, okay, Abu Bakr, let me call you, my friend. <coughs> Well, Abu, it says you are, you declined my call, so what do you want? Yeah, no. I'm not sure what do you want, my friend. Uh... <laughs> Okay, no problem. You don't want to call, no problem. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm coughing. My throat hurting. Uh... Well, here Abu Bakr is sharing with us a hadith. Uh... Maybe we should make different timing for this. Uh, this hadith. Let us see another person. Don't send me links, my friend. I don't open links. Doesn't matter who you are. I don't open links to anyone. Oh, uh, you're still alive. Okay, somebody's asking. <clears throat> be sure to add me to your list so I can call you because if you don't add me, I will not be able to go through. Hello? Hello? Yes, my friend. Hello. Hi, Christian Prince. <laughs> Um, God bless my brother. I was just calling to ask you a quick question. All right. Um, first of all, just want to say, uh, I really pray that the Lord Jesus Christ blesses your ministry, continues to bless your ministry for his glory. Um, I have two quick questions and then I'm going to hang up because I'm working and there's a lot of noise. Uh, the first one, I kind of know what you're going to say, but I want to hear just in case, uh, you know, you have something else to say. There's a lot of like talk and uh, like, uh, like I'm sure you've heard of like Jay Smith and all these guys about how, you know, there's so much evidence that Muhammad might not have even existed. Um, do, do you ever pay attention to any of that? Did you listen to any of that? And um, like, I know for us, for sure, it's way better that, that we act like Muhammad did exist because he's, he's such a blessing for Christians because we can just really destroy Islam with him. But um just as far as like you know you personally do you ever think about any of that stuff yeah you know i saw some of those videos but you need to ask yourself first uh how you can prove that somebody is not exist it's like saying to me it's like an atheist saying to me i'm going to prove to you that there's no god but if he does not exist you can't prove that he doesn't exist right you know what i mean like is uh, like i can prove to you something is exist but I can prove to you that it's not exist. If they are talking about the, the philosophy idea. Uh, however, all what they have is a theory. It can be true, it can be false. But why I want to waste my time and talk about something. I want to debate a Muslim, I debate him about what he believes. Yes. Yeah, if a person, yeah. he comes to you and he says, I want to prove to you that Jesus is not exist. Never was exist. You laugh, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, because we know what are you talking about. We have history, we have historian, we have uh, uh, the computer run by the date of Jesus. So uh, uh, there, is, there, is a, there is a study, it can be useful for people in the level of academy. You know, let us say, I'm a person who's studying history, uh, I am a scientist in history. That make it legitimate to go there because simply, this is my field and I'm trying to find out. But for average person, as a Christian, if I want to argue with Muslims, then I have to argue with them about what they believe, not what I think. Oh, yeah. 
So yeah, uh, most of time he says a prophet. Okay, how that. how your prophet is a prophet, but he do not know uh, the future. How he says such a thing? If I if I start saying to him your prophet never exists, uh, yeah, there's not there's no point of talking. No. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, I, I agree with that. Um, okay, and then so then the the second question. Then, um, this one I'll, I'll just hang up right afterwards. But the second question is. The other day, or uh, not too long ago, I, uh, I I saw some some Ahmadiyya Muslims. They were uh, they were out on the street. They were evangelizing, and I went up to them and I talked to them, and and you know I was trying to to kind of tell them uh, uh, all the stuff that I learned from you, basically, right? Mm. So they but they you know they, they have like this this idea that Islam was basically corrupted by the Muslims. And that this guy Ahmad came and and pretty much uh, made it into the peaceful religion that it was supposed to be, and 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 they definitely like you know the guys that I talked to anyway, they acted like this guy was like a prophet, and and they called him a prophet, they called him a messiah, and and this and that. So the basically the question is, um, these guys they, they you know we talked for a while. The one guy he gave I gave him my email and things like that, and he reached out. And he invited me to go to like a, a Ramadan dinner with them hmm. uh, and, and a mosque. And, and, you know, for me, it's like I, one side of me is like saying, hey, this is a great chance to keep talking to these guys about Christ. But uh, another side of me is thinking, well, you know, I'm, that's like an invitation to walk into the devil's mouth. So uh, if you don't mind uh, just talking to me about like, how much more, how, you know, how do you approach Ahmadiyya Muslims, first of all? And second, like, you know, what would, uh, what should I do? You see, first of all, before we speak to people, we need to know what they believe, correct? Yeah. Okay. Ahmadiyya, they, they believe in what? Do you know? Yeah, they believe that this guy from India came uh, 150 years ago and he claimed to be the Messiah. Exactly. So he came first, like he yeah. came first. First, he was married for three years. So he was married, and then he become a man. His name is the uh, Ahmad Mir Zokulam, and he claimed to be the Messiah, which is very funny. However, I don't want to waste their time and my time. How the Ahmad Mir Zokulam, who claimed to be the Messiah, he died, asked him. They will say he died because of cholera. Yeah. Specifically, he died because of shit. He was shitting right. a lot. Okay. How somebody, he claimed to be the Messiah, and then he died because of shit. Uh -huh. Not only that, he died in the top of his shit. He fell down in his shit. This is a website. I will show it to you on the screen. And this is an Ahmadiyya website. They are trying here to refute us. You know, they will refute. Uh, the death of the Messiah, Ahmad Mirza Ghulam. Peace be upon him. Uh -huh. Some, they say, they are saying here, some they say that the Messiah he died uh, in a certain way, which is like you know supposed to prove that he is not the Messiah. So they are they are going to refute us. How the Messiah he died? Did he die because of diarrhea? The question. Those who they are the enemy of the, the the true Messiah, the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, because his death arrived while he was sick with diarrhea. Obviously, they are ignorant about the religion of Allah, of Islam. Because such a death is a certification from Allah proving that he is from Allah. So look at the logic of those Ahmadiyya. I will use a translation. Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, the proof that he is the Messiah, that he died because of diarrhea. <laughs> You know, they are claiming that this is Allah. He became a murderer. He became a murderer to Allah. Those who they are saying how he can be the Messiah and he die because of diarrhea. Their ignorance of religion of Islam, they don't, should know that this is how Allah, he proved that he is a murderer for Allah. And this is a proof that he is the Messiah. So the Messiah, how we can recognize the Messiah for Ahmadiyya? It's by his shit. This is a false messiah. So those people so, they are so very, oh. very, very deceiving. They, their, their, their Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, 
he claimed that he came to to destroy the cross, and he claimed he destroyed the cross already. And uh, how he destroyed the cross, uh, Ahmad Mir Zoghlam, he mentioned the story of uh, uh, Mary uh, 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 in the in the Bible, where she was wiping the feet of Jesus by her tears and her hair. He says he said that Jesus he loved prostitutes. And he was a drinking person, and he and he's not talking about himself. Remember, he's saying he is the Messiah. So he's saying the Messiah of the Christian is a Messiah who loves prostitute. But all of us we knew that this is a very low class, stupid st statement because this is not what happened. The, the woman she was crying, asking for forgiveness, and Jesus he forgave her sin. Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, he took that story and he claimed that the Messiah because he was young. And he is, according to him, this is the Messiah in the Bible, not him. Him, he will not do that, you know. So he is a false man. He's a, a very hypocrite. So I advise you before you speak to them, learn more about them so you can refute them with something heavy, heavy duty. Not uh, because they will try to use the Bible. And then you ask them, what is the proof that this guy is the Messiah? How the Messiah can be the Messiah or the true Messiah? And yet he could not heal himself. Christians, they came to this guy and they said to him, you know, once in the morning, they come to his door and they have blind people, sick people in their chairs. And they said to him, well, can you heal them? As the Messiah do, he, he closed his door and he ran away. His door and he ran away. I hope <laughs> I answered you. Anything yeah, else? So, so basically just uh, for, for when it comes to them, you attack the man, not Islam itself. Well, Ahmadiyya is just another form of a stupid religion. And Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, he have zero... I believe Ahmad Mirza Ghulam is made by the British uh, uh, intelligent. They needed somebody who made Muslims agree to join the British army. So they created this cult just to make the Muslims join them. And that's why you see a lot of Ahmadiyya. They came to England after the war because simply they are the one who was serving in the British army. And actually, Ahmad Mirza Ghulam himself, he used to work in the post office of Her Majesty the Queen. So imagine the Messiah himself getting paid from the Queen of England. Yeah, to deliver mail, imagine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thank friend. you very much, Chris and Chris. You, you've been going for a lot of hours, man. God bless you, brother. Have thank a you. Great day. Thank you. Well, it's a special occasion, and we are happy to see more people learning. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. All right. God bless. The Messiah, he warned us about false Messiah, they will come. They will say to you, the Messiah is here, the Messiah is there. Don't believe them. How we know the Messiah, the true Messiah? Well, the same chapter today, the Muslim, they came to us to read. In the book of Mark, it says, and the whole Bible actually confirmed, that the Messiah will come with the glory of his angels. This is how we will come. He's not going to come like any human being. I mean, even when the Messiah, he came first time, he was different. He was born of a virgin. He is, he have a power over death. He have power over sickness, have power over blindness. He is, you know, a, 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 a power, a, like godly power in this earth. He is the walking, talking, living word of God. Who is this false Messiah, Ahmad Mirza Ghulam? You will see the Muslim website explain to you that doctors were coming one after one trying to stop his diarrhea. As simple as that. I mean, do you even you need somebody to convince you that this is a stupid cult? And you notice that uh, uh, all those who claim to be the Messiah, they end in a very horrible death as a penalty. As an example, Muhammad, he changed his name. He called himself Muhammad, which means the praised one. But the praised one is the Messiah. How Muhammad, he died? He died by poison from Walmart, a Jewish woman she bought from Home Depot. Some, they say Walmart. This person who claimed to be the Messiah, he died, his death, exposing his lies very easy so even if you are a farmer even if you are a person who do not even have you do not know how to read how to write 
you know that the Messiah, he do not die because of sickness. And there is no way the one who can make the blind see die because of diarrhea. I mean, what happened to your power? What happened to the power of Muhammad? What happened to the power of Allah? What happened to the power of uh, Ahmad Mirza? How come they cannot do what Jesus can do? Jesus, he came, there's a dead man. He is dead already for a day, two, three days. He, he took him from the grave. Muhammad is suffering from a poison, cheap poison, two dollars from Home Depot. Rat poison. His God could not save him. Jesus is the only one who no grave can hold him, no death can take him, and no sword can kill him, because the death of Jesus was very temporary death. For God is always alive. That's why we say resurrection. Jesus said, before Abraham I am. So when they killed, they killed who? They killed the flesh. But God the Son is always exist because his existence has nothing to do with the flesh. Do we understand people? God the Son is exist before his birth. How we can prove that easy? From the word of Jesus, before Abraham I am. The Jews, they said to him, how you can say such a thing? You are not even like 40, 50 years old. How you say such a thing? He said, truly, truly, I say to you that I was before Abraham and Abraham, he witnessed my day. So when a Muslim, he complained, he says, how he is God? And do God die? The same reasoning is the same reason to prove that Jesus is God. Because if a Mohammedan trying to make me believe that Jesus cannot be God because he died, well, in his religion, he did not die. So Jesus must be God then. This is to show you the hypocrisy of this logic. And Jesus' death, it was for the flesh. But even that was resurrected. And when Jesus came to his disciple, even his disciples, they could not believe. I mean, they heard Jesus saying, you can destroy this temple and I will rebuild it in three days. But at that time, they did not understand. They thought he's talking about the temple, the real temple, the stones. But when he came to them after the crucifixion, then they understood exactly what does that mean. Don't forget, please, to subscribe to our Patreon so you can get notified. I see admins, they are not posting Patreon no more. Subscribe there because many of you complain, how come when you go on live, we do not get notification? If you subscribe to the Patreon, regardless if you donate or not, you will receive an email from Patreon saying to you, Christian Prince going live, and this is the link. So you will receive notification. YouTube is not... YouTube always try to oppress our channel. Do we have any Abdul? Any other Muhammadan? Anyone? Any Muhammadan have anything to say? Are you out of all your tricks? But we are happy today that the Muslims, they agree for the sake of their taqiyya that Jesus is the wisdom of God. 
That is amazing. Wisdom of God is perfect. Wisdom. In order to be the wisdom of God, you have to be the perfection of God. For wisdom of God have zero error, zero defect, zero wrong. It is wisdom of God. The Bible says that the wisdom of God, or let's say, that the wisdom of the man is a foolishness. This is how our wisdom is limited. But the wisdom of God never foolishness. Why? Due to his perfection. The perfect God has the perfect wisdom. Any Abdul? Are we out of them today? They look like we are out of them. I don't know. I'm not seeing any. <clears throat> More comment in Skype. You know, when we speak of, as an example uh, of a person who is old, uh, and usually old bring wisdom, right? Because people, they have, uh, they have wisdom. But all of us, we knew that God is the one who gives wisdom. And that's why Jesus, he came. So to save us from our foolishness. Uh, I can be what? Okay, we have another Muslim. Let us see this guy. Some of them they change their like uh, nickname in Skype. Even though I'm, you're on the block, you do not need to change your name. Just call me again with the same account. Let us see this Abdul. <clears throat> yes, my friend, I hear you. Go ahead. Uh, speak to me in English, please. How are you, man? How are you? I called you. I didn't know this was actually you. Yeah, no you problem. Still live, you still live on YouTube? Yes, I'm live on YouTube. Oh, wow. I was watching your live uh, when I was eating lunch. Now I'm driving, but we can still talk here. All right. What do you want to say to us? Are you a Muslim, my friend? Well, I'm an, I'm an, I'm an ex-Muslim. I, I left Islam. Oh, okay. Why you left Islam? Well, uh, uh, it's because I can't defend the obvious false prophet in history. That's why I left Islam. I'm I'm an, I'm a born Arab. I'm from Iraq, so I speak Arabic fluently. So I, I was born Muslim, but I was never like a I was never like a real practicing Muslim. But I, I was always skeptical of Islam. And once I started watching David Wood videos and Christian Prince videos and Rob Christian videos, I'm like, I gotta leave this cult, man. So now you will not get the versions. Do you know what you did to yourself now? Or now I don't. That the virgins doesn't exist, Habibi. The virgins don't exist. How you know? I mean, they are, listen, they are I, they are they are sexy and they are beautiful, and you know it. That is, bro. That's just the lustful brain of a human. That's all that is. But what about because, the, because, what about because the, the only only the men think about his penis. What about the eighty thousand boys he will get? Don't you want to get the what? boys? No, man. I'm not. I'm not gay. Okay. I don't want I don't want sex in heaven, first of all. Okay, what about Second what about all, Allah will give you a banana in the heaven? Don't you like banana? I can have a banana here. Oh from Walmart, you are right. Okay, what about Allah will give you a bracelet from gold? Of gold. A, a, a breast of gold? Bracelet, bracelet. Bracelet of 
bracelet. Mm. All that stuff is materialistic stuff, man. That's why our God is so unique because he's a God of spirit. Our God is spirit. So you are saying to me, you you left Islam to believe in Jesus who promised you no versions. What's wrong with you? He promised me eternal life and he promised me a, a, a forever relationship with the Father and that's all I could ask for, an eternal relationship with the Father. Okay, so which one, which one is better? The promise of Allah as an example in chapter 78, verse number 33, where Allah, he promised you women with big boobs or the promise of Jesus? First of all, first of all, Jesus is better than is even Jesus is better than Islam. In Islam, Isa is better than Muhammad tenfold. Even if I was a Muslim, I would say Muhammad is a better example than than Muhammad. Isa is a better example than Muhammad. I, that's what I would say because it's just that's just the obvious. But me, I don't want I don't want virgins in heaven. That's something. That's that's what a man who thinks about his zip. You feel me? That's a man who thinks only about his sexual pleasures. Even in Hadith, it says that your God is hastened to fulfill your desires on earth. And that's how I see it. Muhammad was just a lustful man and his disobedience to the God's law is suddenly the perfect commandments, the perfect command for every human to follow, which is a contradiction. So in your opinion, Muhammad, he was using God as a, was, as a tool to yes. control people around him and make them the, his slaves. No, he was using God to fulfill his desires. Which is a sexual or money or power, right? He, he was using it for ec political, economical, and, and, and physical gain. Exactly. He was, he was using it. He was using God. But what, what, made you, what made you come to this conclusion? I mean, uh, if you can share with the people that are listening, you know, well, you are born in Iraq, as you said, and you are born in a Muslim family. I'm not going to say your name, but you can say your name if you want. Uh, what made you move from that direction? What was the it, start? It, it, it all started off with Muhammad and Surah 33 verse 21 being the perfect example for all mankind. And then Muhammad marrying Aisha when she was six. That's where it all started. And then I digged a little deeper. And then it said in Surah 65 verse 4, Wallahi lam yahudna. And then I, and then that 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 was that was the start. And then Sophia and Muhammad, Muhammad killed her husband, her father, her family, and then he married her. He bought her and then married her. What type of prophet is this? What type of what type of perfect man is this? I thought to myself. I also, I also uh, the captives. Jesus came to set the captives free, but Muhammad came to take more captives, get more captives. You know. Yeah. And that's just, that's just, I just, I just, I just thought to myself, like, I just thought to myself that if, if there was really a, 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 if there was really a perfect God in the world, which I, 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 a hundred percent believe in, there's a perfect God because, you know, as a, when I was in my mother's womb, okay, I, 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 I felt the spirit of God. I felt the spirit of God in my mother's womb. And that's how I still believe in God to this day, because if it wasn't for the spirit of God meeting me in my mother's womb, I would probably be an atheist right now. But just because because God was there before the because God was there and he chose me, I felt obliged to to do his command commandments, to follow his commandments. Because they're written on my heart. Like Did you did you but, find any any good commandment in Islam? Did you find anything to be good? Uh I uh uh no i i maybe some i mean some muslims are not like as as me as a muslim as an ex-muslim hold on as an ex-muslim growing up from a muslim family you see that these muslims they're really genuine and they're really friendly they're really nice people i, I really love muslims you know my dad hold on hello yeah, I'm here, I'm listening. You see, but, I, you know, you, you grew up, I don't know if you grew up in the Middle East, I grew up in the Middle East. I could not find genuine Muslims. Because, Hello? What, what what genuine Muslim mean when you say genuine Muslim? Hey, what up? Yeah, we're here, Yalla, ta'al. 
Hello, I'm sorry, my dad. I'm talking to. I was talking to my dad. Yeah, that's all right. Driving. You can finish with him, and you call me later. No problem. No, 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 no. I'm finished. He, 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 he. I told him to drive in front of me, but I'm finished. I'm, all right. But I'm telling. I'm, I only have. I only feel that way is because my mom and my dad and my whole family is Muslim. I'm yeah, the only see, one. I, who... I want you to remember what genuine mean. Genuine doesn't mean I'm making. I'm saying they are bad. Genuine is somebody he follow Muhammad, but obviously your mother and your father don't follow Muhammad. Huh? You said excuse me. What did you say? Genuine Muslim, when we say genuine Muslim, we are talking about someone genuine according to Islam. And according to Islam, a genuine Muslim is somebody who is a pervert. He like to have sex with the children. A person who well, likes to practice taqiyya. A well, person... My, 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 my parents, let's say they are, they, they claim to be Sunni Islam, but they are, how we should, the munafiqun. They say we're Muslim, but they, but they, with, they live more like a Western. Exactly. That's what I'm saying to you. So they are not genuine Muslim. They are good They're people. Not, they are good people. But they, but, uh, Jesus, they have a good, have yeah. a good heart. They yeah, say. They, have, they a have a good heart. No, why? Because they are not following Islam. Yeah. If they follow Islam, they will hate everybody. And that's and that's the and that's the thing also. Um, Allah hates Jews and Yahud, well, Messiah, the Jews and the Christians, and He hates Mushrikeen. But the God of the Bible loves the so, those people that Allah hates. You know. The Quran says that you will not find one person between the believers love even those who they are his own family if they oppose Islam. Chapter 58, verse number 22. See, my family is not like that. My family, even though I'm a Christian and I left Islam, they still love me and they still care about me. Wonderful. You know? uh, maybe, maybe, you know, you, you should let your family join us here and maybe we can help them to accept the Messiah. What do you think? Are I you, mean, that's, that, that's uh, a good thing. I was, uh, that's a good thing. I, I like that request. I was talking to my father about Surah 65, verse 4. And then he cut, he got confused. He didn't understand. He said, this is complicated to understand. I'm like, no, it's not. You just read the ayah and understand. I feel like every time I try to show my mom and dad a hadith about Bukhari or Muslim or Termidi, they like to say this is mahroof. They like to, they don't like to listen. They don't like to listen. Yeah, they're to trying to escape the, the embarrassment of the stupid Muhammad. I understand. It's not easy. You grow up all your life believing in something or trying to make yourself thinking that this is a prophet and then you find somebody coming to you especially from your own household showing you how stupid this cult is it's not easy but you are doing a great job you know I, I encourage you not to give no, up no it's, because, no it's because of your work and people like you strong people people who risk their lives for the truth i i i ask for jesus to bless you brother 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 I don't even know your name, but bro brother Prince, brother, brother Prince, I ask Jesus to bless you because it's because people like you who expose the truth and who are not afraid, who who risk their lives because I know what you're doing is not easy, especially if you're risking your life for it. And of course, and of course, if we if we talk about Islam, we are risking our lives. That's that's, and if we show our face, it's a, it's an even more risk. So. For anyone who does this for the truth, I applaud you because you are a true soldier who, who is risking their life for the truth. And that's something that I have in my heart, too. You know, if we don't do what we do, then we will not have someone like you, a good-hearted person, being saved. If we all we say, okay, you know what? There's no hope. Muslims, they hate us. Islam is an evil cult. We will not try to help the Muslims because they don't even deserve our help. Me? That is not what Jesus said. Jesus, he said, I came for the sick, not for the healthy, right? And Jesus, he gave us an example about a shepherd. A shepherd who have like a thousand sheep. And then one of them is gone. What the shepherd will do? We'll leave the one thousand and go after the one is lost. This is what we do, my friend. We are here to save the Muslims because we love them. And this is why I'm asking you. If you like, you can ask your parents to join us. I will speak to them in a very special patient, you know, and uh, we will try, me and you together, to help them to see, to, to, to make them see the truth, and the truth will set them free. Amen. I, and, and actually, you can message me, and I would actually, I would actually love to do that. Well, I don't go in Skype unless I am live. So if you want to talk, if, like if you want in a private, you, I can do it. But uh, you need to tell me, you know, sometime. But if you like, if you like them to go live on air, we can go live on air. 
I mean, my mom, you want to know something? You want to know something? Yeah. My mom said, my mom said in the past that, that, there, that the Quran was mahrur. So I think that's a step, you know? Yeah. She said the Quran was corrupted. The Quran was corrupted. She said the Quran was corrupted. So I think that's a step in the right direction. So. Yeah, that means she already, she knew that this is going to be the book of God. And she is trying to give it explanation why it is not, it's corrupted. But this means that now she already reject whatever is in this book. And this is a good sign, as you say. Yeah, yeah, that was a, that was a good sign. I, uh, my mom, she also threw out the hijab. So that's also a good, that's also a good thing. You see, do you know what the hijab was for? Cannot get molested. So we're at 33 verse 59. Uh, uh, soda. Sauda bin Tuzama, she went out to do pupu. I, I've never heard about that story though, but I just know the Quran says to wear hijab so a guy will. Yeah, but this is because of this is the one who made this verse is not Muhammad, it was Omar. So Omar, Sauda, she went out. I, I, I've heard this argument before. Yeah, I've heard this argument before. This is not argument, this is what the Muslim says. It's not me. This is, this is in the Sahih hadith, you know? And this is here, this is Al-Bukhari, and this is uh, 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 Sahih Muslim. So uh, uh, Sauda, the old wife of Muhammad, she went out to do pupu, and she took off her pant, or Did let's say... Did you pull up the hadith? Yeah, it's in the screen, I have it already. Oh, Sahih uh -huh. Bukhari, just be careful, my friend, you are driving, right? I don't want, I don't want you to look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't driving, look at the driving. screen. Yeah, later you can look. Sahih yeah, Bukhari, right. hadith number 146, Al-Bukhari 146. Okay. So, uh, uh, so that she went out, and um, she is not wearing a veil at that time. There's no veil, <clears throat> and she is doing pupu. So, uh, uh, Omar he says, "I have recognized you, Sauda. I mean, look how how, how filthy he is a woman. She is doing pupu. Why even you bother her? And why you say that? So he's like, we got you busted. I saw your ass. So then uh, Omar uh, uh, he knew now the wife. She will go to Muhammad. She will tell him." So Amr, he said to Muhammad, you know, man, why you don't ask your wife to cover themselves, man? Like, come on. Okay. And then uh, Muhammad, he took exactly what Omar said and he made it a Quran. So when you say this is in the Quran, the Quran was given from Omar. This is why Omar, he says, My Lord agree with me in three things. Some hadith says 10 things. And what, one of them is the chapter of Al-Hijab, and he says, Allah, he sent it, as I said. As I said. Imagine. Exactly, one word by word. Uh, and here you ask yourself, who is the prophet here? Allah? Oh, sorry, who is the God? Allah or Umar? And why uh, uh, Muhammad, he claimed that nobody can make Quran? And then... Uh, Allah, he take the Quran from Amar. You know? Yeah, hey, I've heard this. I've heard. I've I've heard someone say this before, and I and I think you're right because I've had a conversation with a guy, a guy, a Muslim, and uh, a Muslim guy on Instagram. It was like a group chat. They were talking about the same thing that you was talking about, but I was never really, I was never really like in the with it. You understand? Like I was never really. Yeah. I, I just, I, I, me, I hear dogs. Is that your dogs in the background? Uh, you know, everybody here have dogs. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You are safe. <laughs> I'm playing. I'm not, I'm not scared of dogs. I actually love dogs. Yeah. Anyway. So, uh, you know, obviously, uh, what kind of a profit he receive? Uh, his religion from a man who saw his wife bum and what kind of God he take what Omar he said and obviously Omar is a bad person he take it and he put it Omar, as it is in the Quran Omar 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 said you know what you know what surprised me about Omar and in another hadith Omar said that the stone cannot benefit me or harm me right but in another hadith Allah's messenger said that the black stone will become like it will have a mouth and it will have an eye, and on the day of resurrection, it will testify. So we can we can we can clearly see that Omar and Muhammad contradict each other. 
Well, well you see, well, Omar here is exposing the stupidity of Muhammad. But here you notice how, how, how coward Muhammad is. He fear Omar. Because when Omar, he said that, it is, pos is it possible that uh, Muhammad did not hear that? There's no way. Hear right? what? Hear what? I don't understand. Like when Omar, he says, I know that you are a stone. You don't hurt and you don't be do benefit, correct? Uh, yeah. Shouldn't Muhammad right away says to him, what are you talking about? I am the prophet and I know what is right. You are wrong. Yeah, yeah. Muhammad, I I, yeah. yeah, Muhammad, he never answered him. He never said this is not true. <laughs> Muslims but, use Muslims use the specific hadith to um, contradict their idolatry. But in the same, in the same, like, if you do some more research like I've done, you can see that they clearly contradict each other. Omar and yeah, Muhammad. Yeah, because if the, if the black stone is going to be a witness in the day of judgment, as Muhammad said, yeah. Then Omar is lying. So which one of them is, is, is lying? So the Muslim, yeah. as you said, exactly. they use that hadith just to win a point that we don't worship the stone, but they ignore what Muhammad said about that the stone will witness for you, will have mouth, will have ears, will have eyes. Exactly. And then and then the thing is that it will there's another hadith in Al Termidi, Jama'at Tomidi. It says that it will erase your sin, something like that. Yeah. I read it. Yeah. Uh, uh, the black stone and the Yemeni corn are both of them. When you touch them, they erase your sin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've also I've I've seen I've seen hadith from Ibn Abbas himself that Khair al Ummah they call him Khair al Ummah something like that. Hebru Ummah. Hebru. Whatever, whatever. Yeah. I can't even say it correctly. But any anyway. Yeah. They, I've saw hadith from him. They say that um, they say that uh that the Al Safa and Al Marwa were not were not Sunnah until after Muhammad's death and they were like the pagans used to go back and forth from Al Safa and Al Marwa and stuff like that so it's like full of paganism like you can see really you can no, see even, even the Quran even the Quran the, explained the that yeah Al Quran explained that Al Safa and Al Marwa is simply is a pagan thing because if you read the story uh, uh, in the Quran it says Al Safa and Al Marwa are the signs of Allah but in the Hadith we see that the pagans used to used to run back and forth also yeah but if you notice in there it says that there is no sin to practice it did you ask yourself why it says no sin i i i have not read that before so yeah. i don't know chapter 2 verse number 158 it says that and marwa they are among the, the simple of allah or the shrine of allah so those who visit the house and they do the safar marwa there is no sin for them to do so why because Muslim, they said to Muhammad, well, as long now we are not going to follow those, why we are practicing as Safa and Marwa, which was the pagan shrine from before Islam. Muhammad, he have a group of the Arab who became a Muslim. They refused to stop worshipping or acting the Safa and Marwa. So Muhammad, he don't want to lose them. So he said, you know what? As Safa and Marwa is from the shrine of Allah practice it and there is no sin and that don't worry about sin go and do it so muhammad the hypocrite he followed us if what is the safar number well, there is a guy he had sex with the women in the kaaba and uh, allah he made them stones and then they placed the two stones as a let us say idols one in a in a, in a hill and the other one in the other side of the hill and the, the the pagan they used to go and walk between them and touch their private parts so Muhammad, he kept that practice as part of his religion and there's no excuse and there's no explain why in the world, how this has become part of the shrine of Allah. Simply because well, it was, well, it is the shrine of Allah because simply Allah is a pagan God from before Islam and it's what they have. Well, simply, simply I would say that Islam was adopting stories and adopting things that were how should say fabrications and fair, fairy tales from um, from agnostics from from all uh, a sect of Judaism all, all these things like Muhammad was adopting stories like like um, the Trinity the Trinity as you as you said it was um, it was the Father Jesus and Mary if, if God can't if if your God can't even represent an I an ideology correctly. How do you know that's the true God? Like, that's how I was thinking to myself, like... You know, this is remind me, this is remind me when I decided to work as an English teacher. So I yeah. applied, I applied to Stanford, and I told them, 
I want to work as an English teacher. Then they tell, they asked me to write some information about myself, and then I wrote that, uh, uh, like I wrote some information, and then they look at my writing, they says, but look like you do not know English. I said, well, do I need to know English to teach English? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> well, this is Muhammad. Muhammad, you know, do not know what the Trinity, he want to teach uh, the Christians not to follow the Trinity. Muhammad he is a knowledgeable person about uh, suddenly he is a person who knows how the baby is made, how the universe is made. Muhammad is a doctor. Muhammad is a, a, a professor. Uh, Muhammad, uh, the Jews, they keep giving him, getting him busted. They told him, okay, there's a prophet. His name is Zulkurnay. Tell us about him. Muhammad, he got the trap. He told them, oh, Jibreel just told me. And he started telling them about Zulkurnay. He found where the sun set. So this yeah. idiot is an idiot. I yeah. I, I said, I remember a jihadi left Islam because of that story. I, I saw it on David English channel. I saw a jihadi left Islam because of the stories of the Yeah. But, but Muslims, they, they, we don't know who he is. Allah knows best. Allah knows best. Anyway, my friend, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have you. Feel free to let your parents join us one day if you like. And uh, I will be happy to talk to them. Of course. And, and I, I would like to send a message to all my Christians out there in the world. Um, bra, uh, Christian Prince, do you know what? Do you know with the, with, with the Bible when the Bible talks about the New World Order? Do you know what it's? Do you know what it's talking about exactly? Well, you know, the New World Order is to be hypocrite, is to follow a, a Satan, and is to be uh, uh, just well, a, uh, yeah. Well, I, I would like you. I would like you to um. For, for 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 um for your for your Christian audience, I would like you to do like I would like you to watch a video on YouTube. It's it's about it's about the it's about the one world one world government one world order. So like so like major people around the world, like major figures, like very important people, yeah, very like, rich people. like Biden, Putin, rich people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, important rich people. Yes, they went to Saudi Arabia to have a meeting about the New World Order. Did you know that? And, uh, and uh, well, they, I mean, uh, they can try. I mean, but you, can, not you can look it up. It was it, it, it wasn't about it was Putin was not there, Biden was not there, but it was it, it was about it, it was important people there. They were discussing the New World Order. They were discussing the New World Government to to because. The reason why I tell you that is because our economy, our West, is breaking down. We are we are in debt, and inflation is increasing our living, our price of living. So we're not going to have enough money to live soon because of prices going up. Well, this is happening now for the whole world. Yes. And we pray that, you know, I mean, and, you see, when, when people abandon God, then people will become by their own. Hold on, hold on. Uh, remember in Revelation 13 when it says the mark of the beast. Yeah. It says if you don't have it, you can, you shall not buy or sell without it. So I believe that they, these people are going to use a digital currency, a digital currency, and they're going to use and they're going to call it an FRID chip, and they're going to put a chip implanted in your forehead or in your hand. And you know these are signs of it, of intelligence and work because without work you cannot live. As simple as that so if if you if you if if i've watched some videos on youtube about bible prophecy and about are we living in the end times and i and i've seen so much similarities i, I believe that god is calling god is like god is calling people to his ministry to before before the tribulation because i feel not i feel i know i know the end is near and i know jesus is coming back so there's like, there's no more like how I should say there's no more games anymore because the times that we're living in, in in in, in Timothy, third, uh, second Timothy chapter three, it talks about people that are gonna be living in the last days, and you know this is such a clear prophecy. I feel like Paul made a better prophecy than Muhammad in in second Timothy chapter three. <laughs> well, you know we can we cannot compare between the false and the true. But anyway, but you know, that, well, uh, I compare. Trust me, I compare. I compare. I no, I, I know, I know. I compare too, but I compare just to show the difference between the dirt and the clean. Uh, uh, but but, yeah, but, but, but for just... me, I, I want I want to advise you something. 
many things will happen, bad things will happen. Yeah. But we don't need to make assumption and we do not need to follow uh, like our own uh, thinking that, okay, that's, that's, that's the day of judgment is coming. God is in, God in charge. Remember that God is in charge, right? And for us as a believer, we have no worry. Yeah. You know, we have, we have no worry. So whatever will happen, let it happen. For us, we stand for the truth and the truth will set you free. There's people who want to follow the world order. They want to follow the devil. This is their business. A true believer, he knew, he knew, he said, I know my sheep and my sheep, they knew me. Right? Yeah. So we are right. safe and secure. And even, even if the world go hungry, we will not. We will not. Amen. Yeah. Because I, I believe that even our father, one day he will feed us manna as he did people of Israel when they were leaving Egypt. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, my friend. I'm happy that to, to have your call today and maybe you can share with us in some other day too. All right? I'm happy that you answered. I'm happy that you answered, man. I appreciate you very much and I appreciate your work in it and it actually works, man. So keep doing what you're doing, bro. Thank you. God bless you. And say hello to God your family, you. please. God bless you. Bye-bye. Okay. Have a great day. You too. Will we pray for this brother that his parents... I don't know if he's married or not. I hope that all his family, they will accept the Messiah and they will be saved. You see, in Christianity, if somebody, he don't believe in Jesus, uh, you don't hate him for that reason, but you try to save him as much as you can. A Christian person, he is not even allowed to let hate go inside him, for that is from the devil. When Jesus was on the cross, he said, forgive them, Father. He say what he do, and he do what he say. He was teaching us how to forgive, but imagine if he himself don't want to forgive. So he gave us the great example. This is why the Lord, he says, from their fruits you shall know them. Imagine if the Messiah, he was on the cross, and instead of forgiving, what he taught us to do. When they ask him how we pray, how we pray to the Father, he says, our Father out of heaven, and right away said, forgive to us as we forgive to others. So it's a condition, it's a must, it is the way. It is unacceptable for us to be a Christian and not to forgive. So the way of salvation through Christ is to forgive. And Christ is not the same as the filthy Muhammad. He do what he say, and he say what he do. Muhammad, he curse people for no reason. He kill people for no reason. He rape people just for the sake of sex. He take the life. He take freedom. He even go after children because he have zero ethic. With the Messiah, his ethic is not even something you can describe because there's no ethic compared to Jesus. Imagine if you are a person who live in the time of the Messiah, and now not in the time of Messiah, and you can bring the dead to, to life. How many kingdoms you can control? How many kings they will bow down to you? How many rich they will give you all the money to just make them 17 years old again? How many? People would do anything. Anything. He took no penny. He took no wages. He did not say what Muhammad said. Any woman, she want to give herself to the Prophet. When somebody says to me about the Messiah, I do not need really to examine for long. If the Messiah was not the true God, then the Messiah should do what every man do. If I have the power of the Messiah, I will be so proud. I will not even let kings to, you know, kiss my hands. If I have his power, if I can walk over water, if I can tell you the future, if I can heal the sick and make the blind see, if I can resurrect the death, how proud I will be. How that power will make me lose my mind. I will never be humble. 
for this is cannot be given to a man and he stay humble after all of this this is only god act and god talk and god fruits for he is the lord of the heaven and the earth yet he insists to wash the feet of his followers Imagine you have all this power. And then you want to wash the feet of your followers and you say to them, you warn them, if you don't let me do it, you don't belong to me. I do not know you. How he can do that? And why he do that? Those two questions can tell you who is Jesus. If you are a Muslim trying to find an answer, who is the Messiah? Why he do such a thing? Why a person who his, belie his followers believe in him as God, even if you think he is not? Why he want to wash their feet? And why, if they reject or try to refuse to accept, to let him do it? He told them, you will not, and you don't belong to me. One of the things you will notice, that even the disciple of Jesus, even Peter, when Peter, he says to the Messiah, are, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not rely, realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter, he said, no, you shall never wash my feet. Why someone like the Messiah washing the feet of his disciples? He taught you that being proud is a sign of foolishness. Being proud is not a Christian act. Being proud is not a Christ-like. The master is the one who humbled himself. And if the Lord himself, he washed the feet, who is the bishop? Who is the patriarch? Today we see many of those people wearing jewels, gold cross, drive nice cars, even they have bodyguards. They are not following Jesus. That is Jesus. And those who they try to make himself look like acting like Jesus, washing the feet of a few poor people. Well, this is still not what Jesus did. Jesus, he did it literally. You are doing it in a symbolic way. You are doing it in your palace. You are doing it in your uh, fantasy palace. You are doing it because there's cameras and there is people watching. Jesus, he didn't know for none of that. Jesus says to him, unless I wash you, which means your feet, you have no part with me. And then Peter, then he said, well, if this is the case, not only you can wash my feet, my head as well.
And then the Messiah, he said, those who have had bath only, a bath need, only to wash their feet, their whole body is clean. And you are clean. So not every one of you, and here is Jesus is telling us about there's people later or someone who is going to betray, betray him. Not all of you. You cannot hide the truth from Jesus. You cannot lie to him. Not all of you. For he knows, or he knew, who was going to betray him. And that was why he said, not everyone was clean. Read the Bible, my friend. I am sorry that I spent too much time speaking about the garbage of Muhammad when the important is one, which is the Messiah. But as you know, somebody have to clean the garbage from the street. And obviously it is me. Otherwise, I wish that time will come and I will never say one word about the faith of Islam. But somebody have to clean the garbage. If all of us we say, I'm not going to work in the, like with those guys who clean the garbage in the street, you are so proud of yourself. Like, no, not me. You know, I mean, come on, this is a, this is a down job. This is not a job for me. But in case you do not know, if those guys are not exist and they are not doing their job, your life will become filthy. So you should really appreciate them. More than the doctor, because if not them, you will visit the doctor every day. When the Messiah, he said, I came for the sick, not for the healthy. Nothing changed. The world was sick before, and the world is sick today. When we heard our brother speaking about uh, the one world order, I say to you, my friend, it's always like that. The world is sick. How many people they kill each other for over a penny, over a dollar? How many women they take off their clothes just for a money? How many men they use money to, take, to control women? How many filthy men they are child molesters? How many men who they are kings, famous, rich people? They show themselves wearing shiny suits, but they are the devil himself inside them. Even they give donations so everybody can see, I am a good person. I donated a million dollars. They, they, they accept a camel to go, they, they force a camel to go inside the needle eye. Nothing changed. But there is only one thing making a difference is those who believe in the Messiah and the true believers. So we struggle with this life. We struggle with the people around us. We struggle with the sin of mankind and we struggle with our sin. But who said that struggling is a bad thing? The best thing a human being, make him a human, that he struggle with his moral. Otherwise, we are just a bunch of animals. We don't care. An animal, each one of them think about him as an individual. The dog bite the dog. The fish eat the fish. They fight over livestock, over a piece of meat, over some bones or over a female. With the Messiah, we are none of that. So to make it simple, the Messiah, he brings us back to our humanity. When God, he created Adam and Eve, he did not create the devil. 
same as when he created the angel who later became a devil. That was not the purpose of God. God gave us a free will. So by the free will, we will be judged. If we have no free will, then there is no just in the judgment. For you don't punish me for something you force on me. So your free will is a trial. Your free will is the exam. Your free will is your destiny made by your own hands. It is you who write your map by your free will. So I say I believe in the Messiah as Savior. You believe in Muhammad, the child molester. The one who said that even your free will is taken away from you. The one who said that even when you commit adultery is not your decision. So why he want to punish you for a decision you did not make? He is the one who said that even Adam, when he commits sin, he did not choose to commit sin. He is the same person who said that if you don't commit sin, Allah will destroy you. What kind of God this God is? Why he will destroy me if I don't commit sin? I thought Allah is against sin. But the fact is that the God of Islam, he is the devil. And this devil, he wants you to commit sin and bow down to him. Actually, this hadith here explain a lot about Islam. If you want to have a conversation with a Muhammadan. This hadith here is enough to prove that Allah is the devil himself. Here you understand the nature of the God Muhammad trying to bring to us, which is himself. Muhammad, he said, by Allah, by the one who is my soul, is in his hand, where if you were not to commit sin, Allah would replace you, will destroy you with people who commit sin and ask for forgiveness. So this God, he have a special pleasure and the pleasure is to be begging for forgiveness. And if you don't commit sin, well, that pleasure will not happen because you will not ask for forgiveness. You know, there's many uh, English words fit to describe this case, especially if you are a person who study uh, physiology. I don't know if that word correctly, I'm saying it. This is a sickness. This is a person who's suffering from sickness. So imagine there's somebody, he have power to create. And he decides to create you. But if you are good, he will kill you. The condition to stay is to commit sin. And therefore, you ask for forgiveness. So the purpose of your creation, according to Islam, is you begging for forgiveness. This is the joy of Allah. He like to look and he say millions of people please Allah forgive us and if you don't commit sin he will destroy you so now you are like what I'm going to do if I don't commit sin he will destroy me if I commit sin I have to ask for forgiveness otherwise I will be destroyed anyway so this Faithy God, 
hypocrite God, evil God. He's playing you. He is the devil himself. The devil he wants you to commit sin. And then you will ask for forgiveness from the devil. The God of the Christians, he don't want you to commit sin. Actually, all the mission of Jesus is you following him and not to commit sin. And this is how you see how huge the difference is between Islam and Christianity. Islam is a pure evil. The devil himself is not even evil like Islam. What do you think if you see a, a father, let's say you have a kid, and then your kid is not doing anything wrong? So you take a gun and you say, you know what, I'm going to shoot you. And the other kids are watching. Oh, why, father, why you want to shoot me? Because you did not commit sin. You did nothing wrong. So what I should do? You should commit sin and beg me for forgiveness. Me. All of this creation in Islam based on what? And there's a person, his name is Allah. He'd love to see people begging him. Allah created you, according to Islam, just for his own joy, enjoying you begging for forgiveness. Allah, he feels like he is majestic when you do that. A billion a human being bowing down, please Allah, he love it. But if the billion a human being committing no sin, then they will not ask for forgiveness. For no wrong they did. That will make Allah the devil so angry. And you want more proof that Islam is false? I don't know. If this proof is not going to be enough for you, so I'm not sure really how any other proof can be enough. I want to say thank you all for being here. We are here for many hours today, as you know. I'm not sure how many hours, let us see. We are here for 5 hours and 33 minutes. Time goes so fast. I wish I can stay more. Uh, but uh, I used to stay actually way more than 5 hours. We used to stay 12, 13, 16. And we enjoy it really, because the more you see people leaving Islam, accepting Jesus, the more that you you know like your your tiredness goes, uh, you feel good, you feel strong again, you are uh, you you have the energy, and uh, uh, today was a great day. We have a lot of people who out of Islam. We listen to many testimony, and we heard the Muslims trying to deduct tape their prophet and his religion. And the only thing you notice with Muslims when they call me. They make our argument about the Bible, but they refuse to read their books. And the reason I use their books, because this is the best way to get them busted. And they hate it. They don't want, they don't want their books. Why are you reading my book? I'm speaking about the Bible. But he knew that this channel is only about Islam anyway. But because his book is a book of shame. And he knew. They knew. And this is why they don't want to read it. Your prophet, he received wisdom in dishes. Oh, this is a fabrication. So he thought by saying that, that's it. The problem is solved. But this is telling us the nature of this cult. Muslim themselves, they agree that their religion is a pure fabrication. What their prophet said, is not what their prophet said. This is what they say to us. When we show them what their prophet says and they deny it, it means they deny everything about Islam. So how we can listen to someone, he's a Muslim, who wash his hands from his own books. And if the books of Muslims full of lies, how we can trust Islam anyway? 
When a Muslim himself, he says to you, those are fabrication. Well, you just told me that everything in Islam is possible to be fabrication too. And if it is fabrication, why it is there for 1400 years ago, and nobody until now discover it is fabrication? You discover it fabrication? Yeah, me. Because simply I'm trying to avoid the embarrassment. So I deny it. A true believer, he don't feel embarrassed with his belief. Only fake ones. So when a Muslim, he call and he say, your Bible say this? I say, yeah. I say to him, your Quran says this? He says, no. It is there. For they are ashamed. And shame is a great sign, great sign of people leaving this cult. They fight it, they try to reject it, but for how long? You are just fooling and lying to yourself. I want to say thank you guys for being here. May the Lord bless you. We will be back on air again this Sunday. I don't know if you guys like me to come back. As you know, every Friday in the morning and every Sunday, morning time, New York time, 10.30 a.m., we have fixed date, fixed time to come and join. And for me, every day is Easter. So don't worry, it's about being a holiday. For all days belong to the Lord. And all days are holidays and all days are Sabbath. It's about you, how you designate, designate your, your day. Every day the Bible teach, every day you designate to the Lord is a Sabbath. And this is why, when the Bible speak about the crucifixion of Jesus, they were talking about there is a day after that is the Sabbath, but it's not Saturday. Sabbath is any holiday the Jews they practice. Any holiday. It doesn't matter what it is. It is Sabbath. And because it's holiday, it's called Sabbath. So we don't care really if it's Friday when Jesus was crucified. Or it was Wednesday what we care for what Jesus did to us for all as we know time never repeat itself and calendar even the same calendar we use it will make it in a certain day because the year keep changing and the days keep changing and the calendar is not perfect so we don't celebrate a date but we celebrate an occasion we celebrate what Jesus did. And even though this is his death, so how we celebrate? How we celebrate the death? In fact, we are celebrating how the Lord overcome death. Not the death itself. For the Messiah, he overcome death by death. Not by avoiding death. He overcome death, for he is the Almighty God. Thank you all, and I will see you soon again, I hope in Sunday. Have a great time with your family. Pray to everybody. Pray for those who call us, whoever need a prayer. Be, be a family of Christ. Pray for people of Ukraine who they are suffering from war. We pray too for people of Russia, because this filthy Putin, he caused many Russians to die. In a war is useless no point of it just for his ego and those who they are in charge of the game they are causing the death of the poor one old women they lose their houses old men those people are already poor they hardly can survive normal life what those evil people did what those people evil evil people did the evil ones, they live in their palaces. They enjoy their fancy food. They enjoy their gold and silver. Investment is working so good. Manufacture for weapon, making a lot of money. Who is the one who will die? The poor. Rich don't. Rich fly. People die. And the people is the poor.
So pray for them, support them, and pray that the Lord will avoid you from having such a day, that such an evil man, he is your neighbor. Like Putin, he decided that you cannot take this person as a friend, and he will enforce you to be his slave. Pray that someone like Muhammad will not come to us, and history repeat itself. Uh, somebody saying uh, the Bible is so clear about a flat earth my friend is Swedish flat earth I think you have a flat brain nowhere in the Bible says that the earth is a flat when the Bible says the edges of the earth this is a figure of speech flat earth as you see uh, we have you know pray for this person to have a brain no, the Bible never says that the earth is a flat. You are an idiot. The Bible in, in the book of Job says it clearly, the globe of the earth, the ball of the earth, the sphere of the earth. So what are you talking about? The Bible is the one who says that the earth is hanged on nothing. Be aware of people who claim falsely to be Christians. You have a flat brain. It's not the Bible teach flat earth. It is the first book ever who mentioned that the earth is in a shape of round. Ever. Before scientists exist. Before your science was exist. It is the first book who says the earth hanged on nothing. Nothing. Which is hard to understand. Somebody saying to me the earth is hanged on nothing. How it is hanged. How it is on nothing. That is interesting. Yet we don't believe on the Bible because of that. It's not what science we follow. It is God. So it's possible for God to do what is impossible for science to do. There is always weird people, funny people, stupid people, but I believe that God, he gave us a gift. Even the one who is very simple, he should understand that God, he loves him and he will accept him with his decency. The problem is that we decide to lie to ourselves and to lose our decency. You don't go to heaven because you have a PhD in the Bible. You go to heaven if you are a farmer and you see someone hungry and you feed him and you believe in Jesus. It's not education, it's not science, it's not power, it's not money. The Lord, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. This is a question we should ask ourselves every day. What was our fruit for today? Today, I did share with you some of my fruits. I hope they were good. I hope so. We pray. Until we see you again, may the Lord bless you. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And Islam without lies dies. Jesus is the Lord of resurrection. He himself is the resurrection. And the one who believe in me, the Lord said, and die will never, will forever live. Believe in Jesus and live forever. Thank you. I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brothers asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun?
let me tell you brother at the outset that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet it. tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. 